Uh, what are the compromises? Well, terminology compromises I just went, uh, uh, went over with you. The study that was funded by the NEI did not include the actual four groups that we did in the, in, in the, the study as it, as it uh, uh, actually occurred. In the, in the NEI funded study, there was actually an office-based pencil push-up group that was forced upon us by pediatric ophthalmology. They said, we have to see what happens if the kids come in every week for pencil push-ups. That's actually the way we were going to start the study. And eventually we just said, you know what, that's ridiculous because no one does office-based pencil push-ups. Why are we spending all this money on doing that? And eventually we were able to, to switch it over to uh, computer-based uh, uh, therapy. But you can see some of the things that we had to deal with. And then, of course, there were major issues in terms of interpreting the data. Let me show you uh, uh, what happened. Uh, we went to a meeting and we present, presented the data to the group and it's like people from both sides were saying, what are you kidding me? That's not the way I interpret that. No, these data show that office-based vision therapy doesn't work. And then others would say, no, these data show that office-based vision therapy does work. And it's like looking at an illusion, you know, and it, it's just was, we spent months trying to resolve these things and uh, it took lots and lots of compromise. Finally what happened is we had our paper accepted to Ar Archives of Ophthalmology and I get a call 7 a.m. from the National Eye Institute in my house from the project officer of the National Eye Institute saying Mitch we've got a problem and in fact you said you've got a problem and that is I got a call from the, from the uh, uh, publisher of Archives of Ophthalmology saying that we can't, we're, we're uh, not going to accept the manuscript. Uh, someone has called up, one of your investigators has called up, and he's claiming that uh, uh, there was in scientific misconduct. And uh, the manuscript was retracted, and then we had to go through six to, I think maybe six, nine months of uh, negotiation until we finally got the thing accepted again through Archives of Ophthalmology. So there's a, a lot that went into this. Uh, some may, may question, why did, we, why did we publish this in Archives of Ophthalmology? Why didn't we publish it in the uh, optometric journals? And uh, I think we did the right thing. We, uh, we decided we had to put it right in the ophthalmology literature. Optometrists will find it in the ophthalmology literature. If it was in the optometric literature, ophthalmologists probably wouldn't find it. So we put it right in Archives of Ophthalmology. And uh, uh, here's another example of, of, of some of the, the things that went on behind the scene. This is actually the exact text from the conclusion of our study, uh, of our paper. Uh, we, in our conclusion, we say that this is the first large-scale multi-center randomized clinical trial of treatments for symptomatic CI. It demonstrated that office-based virgin accommodative therapy with home reinforcement is more effective than home-based pencil push-ups or computer virgin therapy and pencil push-ups in improving symptoms and signs with CI. That's the way it reads. This is the way it re originally read and should be considered as a first-line treatment for convergence insufficiency. Uh, we had to take that out. We couldn't get that through, uh, you know, again, with a collaborative group. And uh, in the end, we pulled that and left it like that. Uh, there was subsequent, what was the reaction of the uh, communities outside optometry? Let's take a look at the editorial that came along with our publication. This is an editorial from David Wallace, uh, a pediatric ophthalmologist. Look at what he says, in my experience, I want to highlight that, in my experience, uh, these home-based therapies are sufficient for patients with convergence insufficiency. You don't need that office based even though they said office, found office-based vision therapy was the most effective treatment in a randomized clinical trial. In my experience, home-based therapy is sufficient. Patients, and then another uh, issue was a patients in an ideal comparison group would have pr received equal contact time with the therapist. So this I found this I found most interesting. For all these years, optometrists have been con have been criticized for not having the data when we say vision therapy is what I use to treat convergence insufficiency. Show me the data. No, I don't want to hear about your experience. It works for you clinically, retrospective studies, case studies. 
but it's okay after we publish a randomized clinical trial for a pediat uh, pediatric ophthalmologist and archives of ophthalmologists to say, well, I don't care what you guys found because in my experience as a pediatric ophthalmologist, home-based pencil push-ups is all you need to succeed. So that's a little contradictory. This was a, a kind of a, a silly statement, I believe. Uh, uh, yeah, an ideal comparison group may have been equal contact time with a therapist, but we were trying to compare traditional therapies as they're administered in the office setting. No one brings in a patient for pencil push-ups into the office for 60 minutes a week at doing this. I mean, it's just not real life. So uh, these were uh, some of the comments that we received. Uh, as it turns out, this publication from 2008-2009 was the most often downloaded publication in archives of ophthalmology, more so than anything on macular degeneration or glaucoma or anything else, the one on CITT. So we're pretty proud of that. Uh, I stood up in front of the Pediatric Eye Disease Investigator Group one day, a couple of years ago. We're uh, about to start a new study with the PEDIG, the PEDIG group, doing a uh, home-based, effectiveness of home-based therapy for convergence insufficiency. Uh, we're going to be doing a study of uh, 600 kids, probably in about a year. It will start in about a year. Anyway, uh, as we're going through the planning, we're trying to pick out which groups should we use. And, and my intention was, since the CITT showed that pencil push-ups was not that effective, uh, that we would use computer home computer therapy versus a placebo group, a nice simple two uh, treatment group uh, study. So I got up, we got up uh, and uh, we started talking about it and we said, well, how many of you, this is an audience with let's say 150, 100 pediatric ophthalmologists, 50 pediatric optometrists. And we asked, uh, well, after the CITT results, after you've read that paper, how many of you are still using pencil push-ups as your primary treatment option for convergence insufficiency. And 90% of the pediatric ophthalmologists said they, that's what they still use. Uh, uh, they're not, they, in spite of what they read, they still feel, well, it's a lot cheaper than office-based vision therapy. Uh, if it doesn't work, we can always use office-based vision therapy, which I guess is a, is, is, you could understand it as a possible suggestion, but, uh, uh, it was surprising to me that this is, uh, this is the, reac the reaction. So you can see it's, uh, you know, even after you pr present the results of a randomized clinical trial, it doesn't mean you're going to get uh, immediate um, acceptance of what you publish. Um, other things that we learned are the importance of having really good assistance right up front. And we got that from uh, uh, Dr. Goldberg and uh, uh, Carla Zadnik here from, from OSU, uh, who really helped us in the beginning uh, with uh, uh, the planning stages and uh, submission and resubmission, uh, and that was really critical. And of course, persistence, 15 years of work. It took us 15 years to get to the point where we published the study, and like I showed you before, the ability to get up and to keep uh, moving forward even after you have uh, setbacks, and there were many setbacks along the way. Uh, and the realization that, you know, it's not always uh, enough just to have good science. Good science is, is absolutely essential, but it's not enough to be funded. Uh, you've got to have a good awareness of who's going to be reviewing your paper who's going, and what they're going to be, uh, uh, what criticisms uh, are going to uh, likely appear. And uh, very, very important to, to establish a credible interdisciplinary collaborative team, uh, which we fortunately did. And then, of course, there's timing and just good luck. I think we just, we were there at the right time. I think the NEI, the National Eye Institute, wanted to do a study on vision therapy. They were getting heat. They wanted to do something. We came up with good science. We happened to be in the right place at the right time. We got funded. Uh, they wanted to do an optometry grant. There, were, you know, there was pressure from optometry to get more funding for, uh, for optometry. And I think we happened to be there at the right times in terms of the, the construction of the NEI Executive Council, which is the final leap, the final obstacle until, before you're funded. I think we had the right composition. So it was good science, uh, a lot of hard work, uh, uh, important assistance from a lot of collaborators, and uh, uh, a little bit of luck and timing as well. 
Uh, you might be interested in what we're doing now in the future. I told you what we've done up to now. I mentioned that we have, we have this PEDIC study that is about to uh, uh, begin uh, in which we're going to study uh, 600 children. There's going to be a, a, a placebo group, a home-based computer therapy group, and a uh, pencil push-up group. Um, we're going to look at the same kind of uh, outcome measures as we used in the CITT. And there's also talk of using reading as a secondary outcome measure and potentially attention as a secondary outcome measure. In our own group of CITT investigators, uh, the same group that did the initial study, over the last two years, uh, we've uh, done some pilot study. We've uh, looked at 50 children with convergence insufficiency. We've treated them with office-based vision therapy. And we did a reading battery and an attention battery of tests before and after. And uh, we have some interesting data, which uh, we're going to use to submit a, hopefully submit a large-scale randomized clinical trial type uh, proposal again to the NEI. And this time, we're going to try to answer the question, if you treat CI successfully using vision therapy, do you actually get a change in reading and attention? So uh, we're hoping that over the next year, we'll submit that grant. And another grant that is in the works right now, we're doing a, uh, uh, this would be a VI, VA, Veterans Administration funded study on the effectiveness of treatment of CI after TBI. Some of you probably realize that the soldiers coming back from Iraq and uh, Afghanistan, uh, uh, the, the signature wound, the signature problem is, uh, is uh, blast injury. And uh, recent studies have shown that one of the most common vision problems after blast injury is actually convergence insufficiency. So we're going to put together a study. We have uh, six different VA sites, uh, and uh, hopefully that will be uh, uh, something that will be funded. It, the group is just forming now, so this is really preliminary. So uh, that's where we've been. Uh, that's where we're going. And now you know the rest of the story. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you very much.